Hello, dear friends. How are you doing? God bless you. Welcome to the rescue program. We are very thankful that you have accompanied us day after day during this program. I am convinced that it has been a blessing for you. Rescue is a ministry that works on behalf of people and families, bringing them a message of faith and hope in the world of crisis. Today we have the privilege of listening to Felipe Acuña, a speaker from Costa Rica, with the message "Becoming One in God." Please let us listen. It is my great pleasure to be here with you this afternoon, sharing with you these series of conferences that we've developed for the family department. Marriage is one of the most important institutions on this earth, and this title, "Becoming One Flesh in God," reflects that. We are told. That we become one, we merge into one flesh, we fuse together. When through marriage we are united in a bond that joins our lives forever. Let us go then to the holy scriptures in the book of Genesis, chapter two, verse eighteen, and read what the Bible says. And the Lord God said, "It is not good that man should be alone." I will make him a help meet for him. You know there are many differences in the way that different countries evaluate or grade certain things. Some countries have evaluating systems from one to five. In other countries, they use percentages, one to a hundred. And in other countries, they、um, evaluate things from one to ten. I remember when I was in school,、uh, the evaluation system changed many times. But they did use words, for example, outstanding, notable, sufficient, and insufficient. But when we look at how God creates something in Genesis chapter one, speaking about creation, we see that God saw that it was good. So God uses the word "good" to evaluate or grade something. And here, when He examines, sees, and grades that man is alone, He says it is not good. It was not right. It wasn't good for man to be alone. In this awesome splendor that God has when He creates man with majesty, with light, with brilliance, with an incredible intellect and understanding, a beautiful man made by the hand of God, a complexion healthy and beautiful as well. And we know that Christ was also present in creation, and upon considering this majestic being, he realizes something important, something of crucial importance. What does God realize? That man was alone, and that it wasn't good for him to be alone. You know, God didn't create an employee for Adam; He didn't create a servant for him. Instead, he created a help meet for him, and this means that it was a help, a companion that was intelligent, capable, loving. It was not good for man to be alone. And when God created man, he realized that man needed a partner, and that in all creation there was no help meet for him. Man had not been created to live in solitude. Because he had a sociable nature, without company, companionship, he would not have been able to have enjoyed all of the beauty of God's creation. We can't be alone. We weren't created to be alone. And this situation that we're living today, because of this pandemic, must serve to strengthen us and grow closer to our spouses because we have had time to spend together at home. To realize certain activities and duties together, but God, in His great wisdom, created man, and created him with this need to have a companion. A perfect puzzle was created, but it was missing one piece, and this main piece was that of companionship—a suitable companion to fulfill and complete. The happiness of man, and thus God created woman. 
Our human race was made up of men and women. The human race was a man and a woman joined together. And God created this race, created humanity, and He gave us an important lesson that would serve throughout all of history. He gave Adam a wife, a woman, a companion. Marriage was one of the first gifts to man. He provided a helpmeet for him, a helper that was truly suitable for him, fitted to be his companion, one that could be equal and one with him in love and sympathy, something that would truly complement man, something that would come to be his other half, his perfect complement. And this is why we realize how Satan attacks the marriage unity. Because he knows that if he is able to destroy a marriage, he will have destroyed a great part in the happiness of humankind. It doesn't matter in which environment we look at, the best enterprises ruin when marriages divorce. The best companies ruin when lovers are introduced. Companies, institutions, places, the best fortunes are made only when men and women unite. But on the same hand, the greatest disasters are also made when men and women decide to break this bond. What a beautiful title, Becoming One Flesh in God. Because marriage should be once only. It should be composed of one human being for another, one man to one woman. And a marriage cannot have any other characteristic other than those with which it was created for. It was created to unite, to magnify, to protect, and make a little heaven here on earth. To protect men and women from great sins, such as adultery. Eve was created from a rib taken from Adam's side, signifying that she was not to control him as the head, nor to be trampled under his feet as his inferior. She was taken from a rib. I don't know, I'm not a doctor. I'm not familiarized with the different methods of practice of medicine around the world. But what I do know is that Costa Rica has been praised on a worldwide level because of its health and medical system. We have already been congratulated during this pandemic because of our health system. But what I would like to say is this. Because of our health system here in Costa Rica, when someone breaks one of their ribs, they won't have a cast placed. They'll only get bandaged. And generally, these are great pains. Breaking or fracturing a rib is a tremendous thing because you can't treat it directly. The ribs must heal slowly. And it is not a fast healing process and oftentimes very painful. This means then that it not only is it painful, but it is also a delicate process. A rib is a very sensitive part of the body that shapes and sustains our body. And this sensitive part was taken out of Adam. Eve was formed out of this sensitive part of his body, his rib. And this was to help him understand that she was part of him, that she was his life, his other half, that she was part of him. A part of man, bone of his bone, flesh of his flesh. She was his second self, showing the close union and the affectionate attachment that should exist in this relation. How is it possible then that marriages have come to such a degraded state today? How is it possible that there are places where marriages don't even exist? 
there are some countries where people don't marry each other because it's too expensive. And most of the people there live in an open relationship where they can easily change from one and another partner. Some people who have already gotten married break this law in heaven and on earth. Marriage was given for the protection of the homes. But what can we do in a world where this institution is being trampled? This is where the important title comes in. Becoming one flesh in God. It is only through the power of God and only through God's greatness that we can be faithful. Paul said, marriage is honorable in all and the bed undefiled. And Christ magnified marriage. In the Sermon of the Mount, he magnified it and talked about how God created man and women to unite them into one flesh. God didn't create two women for one man nor two men for one woman. What he did, he did it perfectly. He did it in all his wisdom. Adam means man, and Eve means mother of all living beings. They were both the first living beings that existed on this earth. We call them our parents. We are descendants of Adam and Eve. Marriage is a blessing for the human being. It contributes to a sense of fulfillment and joy in people, but this develops in its fullness when communion with the Creator takes the first priority in the home. It is only through a unique transformation in Jesus Christ that we can truly become one and be transformed. We are able to magnify this marriage institution and form marriages for the honor and glory of God. Marriage will become a reality and will be sanctified only when Christ reigns supreme in the heart of every human being. I have known people that have been married for 60 years. My mother and my father were married for almost 58 years. This stopped because of the death of my mother. And it's a battle that we have when we struggle to keep our marriages joined together. It's quite a feat, actually, an astonishing feat that can only be accomplished through prayer, through surrender, and by nourishing this love. The only way that we can be transformed in Christ and have a marriage that truly honors and glorifies God is by wholeheartedly giving ourselves to Him and by learning to love one another. In life's reality, one must never neglect the most important and pure principles of knowing that marriage can only happen once in our lifetimes and that we must be joined together and in communion with God and Jesus Christ for it to function. In the same way that Christ and the angels lived together in holy communion with God and shared valuable moments with the first couple, Adam and Eve, the Christian home of our days, must find joy in living precious moments where the Word of God is diligently studied. The study of the Word of God is what unites marriages. It also comes by sharing special moments together, by being together, by doing things together, by doing what we like, and by doing both what she likes and what I like. Fathers and mothers who make God first in their household, who teach their children that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, glorify God before angels and before men. There only is one way for this to work, by living with Jesus Christ. There is no other way, no other fullness whereby we can accept all this. The only way that we can truly be converted and transformed and become one flesh in Christ is by giving our hearts to God and dedicating our marriages to the Lord. The presence of Christ alone can make men and women happy. Christ can turn all the common waters of life into the wine of heaven. The home then becomes as an Eden of bless 
and the family, a beautiful symbol of the family in heaven. How beautiful. It's possible, it truly is. If Adam and Eve, amid their pain, carried the burden of sin and reproach of humanity back then, and were able to live through sufferings together, helping each other, and supporting each other till they aged and still gave a great testimony to humanity, then this means that we can also do it. This means then that it is also a possibility for us, something that by no means is impossible. In the home, there must be harmony in each of its members. The father and mother must be united in one purpose. But above all, they daily must join themselves to God. It's interesting because man wasn't complete. And God said that it wasn't good for man to be alone. So he gave him a great sleep and man slept. And when he reopened his eyes, he saw that beautiful creature by his side, Eve, the one who would be part of his life, the one who would be the mother of his children and the mother of all of humanity. And there are so many beautiful marriages registered in the Bible. We have Abraham and Sarah. We have Isaac and Rebecca. And we have so many more marriages that were made for the honor and glory of God. But our lives need to be consecrated. Dear young men, before you make this decision, pray to God and ask Him to send you the woman of your dreams and the woman that He has appointed for you. Dear young woman, pray to God that He may send you the appointed man because remember, you will either live your whole life happily or you will live your whole life in the shadow of failure according to the choice that you made. In the home, there must be harmony in each of its members. There must be harmony. There must be understanding. There must be a unique agreement where both the man and the women merge and live one for the other. Man shouldn't have to worry about himself because she will take care of him. And she needn't not worry about herself because he will take care of her. They are one flesh. They merge into one body physically and spiritually. This is how they do it. In Ephesians chapter 5, verse 30, the word of the Lord tells us that we are members of His body, of his flesh and of his bones. The Christian's relationship with the Lord Jesus must be so intimate that one can say we are members of his body. The Christian cannot do anything for himself, for if he separates himself from his Lord, he will die spiritually and even physically. As Christians, we are solemnly called to bring forth fruits, and this fruit must show the unity of marriage. We must produce fruits in our marriages, but it is a struggle. Satan works against the bonds of marriage. Satan places adultery, fornication, worldly music, and sensualism everywhere. Today, televisions and movies are full of this sensuality and infidelity, and our youth are becoming nourished by this. Our men and women are getting nourished by this sinfulness. And later on, the marriage will fail. We can become only one through prayer, through surrender, and through true love. How beautiful will it be then when Christ comes in the clouds of heaven and I can lift my hands upwards to heaven with my wife and children and together go to heaven. But how sad will it be if the mother and the father go to heaven and the children are left behind? How sad will it be if father and mother go to heaven and the children stay behind, or the mother goes and the father stays, or vice versa. We must fight to be in heaven's group. The first church that Christ gives us is our home. The first souls we need to tend to are those in our own homes. Man will learn how to tend to his wife, and his women will learn how to tend to her husband, until finally they slowly transform and fuse into one flesh. Just as the branches depend on the connection with the trunk to be able to have life, 
So the Christian depends on the connection with Christ to bear fruit for heaven and to reach eternal life. There isn't anything else that we cannot do. There isn't another moment other than now for us to surrender. If we have lost the love in our homes, then let us ask the Lord to return it to us. Let us have those affection, that care, those kisses, those hugs, those feelings revive once again in our homes. In this life, many youth have a desire to fall in love. Let us be young again then. Let us be like the youth who are excited to be in love. Remember, when you see your wife aging, and when you say, no, she's too old, I don't like her anymore then look in the mirror because you have also aged with her. And a big part of that old age came up from putting up with your character and putting up with your bad actions. But also let your son or your daughter run before you so that in them you may see your youthfulness that your wife gave you. And the same thing goes for the wife. Why don't we understand why don't we give our lives directly to God? Why don't we give our marriages to God? Why don't we set apart special moments to share the love, the care, and the happiness? Why don't we open the Holy Scriptures together, talk about them, and pray together as if we were one? Rem resolve that you will be fruit-bearing members of the living vine. The scion can flourish only as it receives life and strength from the parent stock. Improve then every opportunity to connect yourselves more closely with Christ. It is by believing Him, loving Him, copying Him, and depending wholly upon Him that you are to become one with Him, and through you, His life and character will be revealed to the world. Just like we can come and give our lives to Christ, likewise should we give our marriage entirely to God and become one in Jesus Christ. This is the only way. Let us ask the Lord for help so that we can surrender our hearts so that we can unite with our home and with our spouse and so that we can strive to do our best every day. Yet, let us never forget to pray. Let us remember those happy times when everything was greatness and happiness, when apart from everything, we loved each other. Why did we get married? Because we realized we couldn't live far apart from that person anymore. Let us return to that first love, to that first youthfulness, to that adolescence whereby we fell in love back then and wanted to be one. Because the Bible says that a marriage is one and they shall be one flesh. Dear marriages, we can only overcome the enemy if we are united as one in marriage. The home is the most sacred and secure place where we as Christians can be saved. This invitation is extended towards us today. May the grace of the Lord unite our marriages and may we soon, one day, celebrate the wedding of the Lamb together. May the Lord bless us. Amen. I know that all these topics have been a blessing for your life. Please contact us through the email, phone number, and social media that are listed here. We want to know your questions and would love to send you other materials that will be a blessing for your life. You can also request the free Bible course at the feet of Jesus. Goodbye and see you at the next rescue program. May God bless you richly.